Hey folks, welcome to the third in a growing series of videos where I choose a Sonic the Hedgehog character and try to give a complete overview and history of them. Today we're going to be profiling Bean the Dynamite, one of the few Sonic characters not to have their species in their name. Bean is a dynamite-loving bird, but also a great pick for my character profile series. A while back I made a video running through every single playable Sonic character, and weirdly enough, the most commented on part of that video was my mini Bean profile, because I stated he was a woodpecker, as opposed to a duck. In this video, I want to give a complete history of Bean the Dynamite, including some of the controversies and rumours that have plagued him and his family, while also trying to clear up the confusion behind this bizarre character species. Is he a duck? Or a woodpecker? Let me know in the comments where you fall on this debate, and also let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future videos. Okay, let's get going. Bean's story begins with his first appearance in the once obscure mid-90s arcade exclusive fighting game, Sonic the Fighters. Originally released in 1996, the idea for the game reportedly came from an unnamed Sega AM2 developer who was working on Fighting Vipers. Fighting Vipers was a game built by the same team behind Sega's successful Virtua Fighter, its first foray into the 3D fighting game genre. One of the AM2 team added a crude but playable Sonic and Tails to the game for their own amusement. They didn't make the final cut, but what started as a little bit of fun by one anonymous developer inspired Sega. The idea of a Sonic-based fighting game had legs, and would get the approval of some Sega higher-ups, including Yuji Naka. The AM2 team were tasked with developing a Sonic fighting game based off a slightly simplified version of the Fighting Vipers engine, and they were tasked with building a roster of characters. The final roster ended up including some old favourites, of course there was Sonic and Tails and Knuckles, along with Amy, Espio the Chameleon from Team Chaotix, and also Fang the Sniper, who you might know as Knack the Weasel. There was also two brand new characters created for the game, Bark the Polar Bear and Bean the Dynamite. Bean is a green bird with a stylish red neckerchief and the signature Sonic shoes and gloves that most characters have. As his name suggests, he appears to be a bit of an explosives expert, being able to whip up bombs out of nowhere and throw them at opponents. Bean's stage is also Dynamite Plant, an industrial looking area. Bean is actually one of the fastest characters in the game, and his moveset consists of pecs and bomb throws. He can also pull off a move called the Bean Warp with the help of a Chaos Emerald. It's essentially a teleport move, which is kind of like Shadow's Chaos Control, which is pretty interesting. In terms of personality, Bean isn't very fleshed out in Sonic the Fighters, and his allegiance isn't really clear. He's one of the holders and guardians of the Chaos Emeralds in this game, who are all battling to determine which Chaos Emerald Guardian is the strongest, and who should go onwards to take on Dr. Eggman in the Death Egg 2. This suggests that he's firmly anti-Eggman, but his industrial stage, his love of bombs and explosions, and his temper tantrums that he throws when he loses a fight suggests that Bean might have a bit of a naughty streak in him, but we'll come back to that later. Bean's design and moveset was based off Bin and Pin, two characters from an old, obscure Sega game by the name of Dynamite Ducks. Dynamite Ducks is a side-scrolling beat-em-up arcade game, also created by Sega AM2 and released in 1988. It was later ported to a bunch of consoles and home computers, including a version on the Sega Master System. Dynamite Duck sees Bin and Pin embarking on a worldwide quest to save Lucy, their human owner, after she's kidnapped. It's standard fare for a side-scrolling beat-em-up. The pair punch and throw their way through hordes of strange enemies, and can pick up useful weapons along the way, including their signature cartoon-style bombs. Bean and Pin look very similar to Bean, though they're blue and red respectively, and have little bow ties as opposed to Bean's stylish neckerchief. Dynamite Ducks is a pretty decent game, and it's suitably bizarre. Colonel Sanders, of KFC fame, makes a couple of prominent appearances. First, stood outside his Kentucky Friend chicken restaurant in the first stage, 
and then refereeing the bonus round boxing match too. Dynamite Dirks also happened to be subject to one of Sega's weirdest rumours that turned out to be true. The Amiga and Atari ST versions of the game's codebase contain a rather cryptic message stored within. If you want to see something dirty, put code here. If the five stops are replaced with the word dirty, the game will play an explicit version of the intro cutscene, complete with Topless Lucy and a bizarre adult version of the story where the main villain is a pimp. I'm being 100% serious. This adult introduction was rumoured to be in the game by magazines for decades, but it was only confirmed a few years ago in 2017. For more details, check the link to Guru Larry's video in the description. He covers this revelation in much more detail. Anyway, back on topic. We can say with confidence that Bin and Pin are indeed ducks. The game's name is a bit of a giveaway, but the Master System version of the game had a slightly tweaked version of the story that makes Bin, whose full name is Michael Bin in this version, the boyfriend of Lucy. The game's manual explicitly states that Michael Bin is transformed into a duck while Lucy is captured by an evil troll. Being based off Bin and Pin, we might assume that Bean is also a duck, but there is evidence to the contrary. First, Bean has a pecking move, something you'd associate more with a woodpecker than a duck. Second, Bean has a prominent quiff and tail, reminiscent of Woody Woodpecker. The tail is a lot larger than you'd expect of a duck, though Bin and Pin kind of have the same thing going on too. The biggest piece of evidence that Bean is a woodpecker though, comes from the guidebook to another fighting game, Fighters Megamix. Bean appeared alongside fellow Sonic the Fighters debutante, Bark the Polar Bear, representing the Sonic franchise in Fighters Megamix, a fighting game developed again by Sega AM2 for the Sega Saturn. This was when Sega were going through a pretty huge fighting game phase. Virtua Fighter was a big hit in Japan, and Fighting Vipers, which was designed more for American audiences, was very well received, being celebrated as one of the best exclusive games on the Sega Saturn. Unlike the other two, Fighters Megamix had no arcade release. Fighters Megamix was inspired by SNK's King of Fighters series, bringing together characters from different franchises to duke it out. The Fighters Megamix roster consisted mainly of characters from Virtua Fighter and Fighting Vipers, but it also included a bunch of wacky, unlockable characters, including Bean, Bark, Janet from Virtua Cop 2, a strange Mexican green bean called Deku, a car from Daytona USA, and the AM2 palm tree logo. Bean plays identically, as in Sonic the Fighters, but he's much taller this time around, standing the same height as the human combatants, which is a little disconcerting. You wouldn't want to meet Bean in the dark alleyway. It's the Japanese guide for Fighters Megamix that gives us our most compelling evidence as to Bean the Dynamite species. The official guide states explicitly that Bean is, in fact, a woodpecker. This knowledge didn't find its way outside of Japan until decades later when the guide was uploaded online and translated by fans. Confusingly though, this guide also cements Bean's relationship with Bin, by noting that Bin is Bean's father, even though they're two different species. Maybe Bean is adopted? Bin is actually playable in Fighters Megamix 2 as an alternate costume of Bean. This is quite the revelation, because it kind of means that Dynamite Ducks exists in the extended Sonic universe, which is a bizarre thought. It's worth noting that a Sonic the Fighters instructional VHS tape also released at some point in Japan. The tape is about 45 minutes long and it's been uploaded to YouTube, though I believe it's yet to be translated into English. Perhaps there's even more to discover about being that us non-Japanese speakers don't know about. Until someone translates it, we'll never know. The official guide also mentions that Bean loves sports and is particularly good at soccer, which brings us on to Bean's next appearance. Bean would star next in another non-Sonic game, in Virtua Striker 2, a football game originally released in arcades in 1997, and later on the Sega Dreamcast in 1999. 
Bean's Virtua Striker 2 appearance was made known in the UK's official Sega Saturn magazine. In the April 1998 issue, in a section reporting on arcade-related goings-on, the magazine notes how to unlock a secret team of players called Team MVP Yuki-chan, consisting of some wacky characters like a snowman, a turtle and a giant amoeba. Bean is also prominently pictured in this mini-article. For a while, this article went unchallenged, but the weird thing is, when you try out the cheat code, Bean isn't part of Team MVP Yuki-chan. Because the article originated in the April edition of the magazine, some assumed it was an April Fool's gag. But no, Bean is in Virtua Striker 2. The key to unlocking him was found by Sonic Retro Forum users hidden away on Amusement Vision's website. Amusement Vision being an old research and development wing of Sega. Bean is not part of Team MVP Yuki-chan, but instead part of Team FC Sega another secret unlockable team consisting of Sega staff members. For starters, FC Sega's goalkeepers have a lovely Bean face on their jerseys. This little face is Bean's portrait in the Sonic the Fighter's character selection screen. But if the player makes a substitution, when they're losing, with less than a minute remaining in the game, then Bean can be substituted on. Apparently, Bean is only unlockable in the arcade version of the game on a cabinet on which FC Sega have won 50 matches. It all seems very specific and really hard to pull off, but he's there. And he makes a duck-like quack when he kicks the ball. It's a cool, if obscure, cameo. And I can't help but feel that Bean's inclusion may have been inspired by the 1998 World Cup mascot Futix, the French rooster. That's completely unfounded speculation though, but I do think it's curious that Bean of all characters was included as opposed to, for example, Sonic. <laughs> Since his late 90s golden age, Bean has pretty much disappeared from the Sonic in-game universe. After Virtua Striker 2, Bean was next seen over a decade later in Sonic Generations, where he graced wanted posters in City Escape, along with fellow Sonic the Fighters alumni Bark the Polar Bear and Fang the Sniper. Half a decade after Generations and Bean also made something of an appearance in Sonic Mania's Mirage Saloon Zone. Bean, Bark and Fang once again appear in wanted posters plastered throughout the stage. But at the start of Act 2, either Bean, Bark or Fang will appear riding a badnik to bring down the tornado, with Bean's weapon of choice being a bomb of course. The truth is that this isn't really Bean. Mirage Saloon ends with a fight against Bean and his partners in crime, except they're revealed to be illusions, cast by Heavy Magician, one of the hard-boiled heavies. So technically, Bean is still missing in action, not seen in the flesh since Virtua Striker 2. One final thing to mention is Bean's portrayal in the Archie and IDW comic book series. In the Archie comics, Bean is prone to mood swings and erratic behaviour. He has a habit of assigning people juvenile nicknames, calling Eggman Baldy McNose Hair, for example, and is a possible kleptomaniac, obsessed with collecting shiny objects. Archie paint Bean as a neutral character in the battle between Sonic and Eggman. Bean is usually teaming up with both Bark and Fang in the role of a mercenary, which often brings him into the employ of more villainous characters like Mammoth Mogul and into conflict with Sonic and the Freedom Fighters. I think Bean's personality in the Archie comics is a nice fit for the very little that we know about him from the games. Bean acting as a mercenary is a particularly nice and fitting touch. It fits with the wanted posters seen in Generations and Mania. Goodness knows that the Sonic series has a lot of heroes, so I think being something of a mercenary anti-hero makes Bean stand out a little bit more from the pack. His temper tantrums in Sonic the Fighters were an early giveaway that he wasn't the most mature character, so Archie's additional character traits also work well in my opinion. Crucially though, Bean is very explicitly a duck in the Archie comics. Though he made his Archie debut before the Fighters Mega Mix Woodpecker Revelation was widely known. In the IDW comic series, Bean is also not very emotionally mature and has a deep love for watching explosives blow up, which makes perfect sense. 
in the IDW comic series, which came out after the fighter's Mega Mix revelation, Bean is a woodpecker. This seems like a good place to stop and finally try and answer that important philosophical question. Is Bean a duck or a woodpecker? Points in favour of him being a duck. His father, Bin, is a duck. He quacks in Virtual Striker 2. And he's a duck in the Archie comic book series. Points in favour of him being a woodpecker. The fighter's Mega Mix guidebook says that he's a woodpecker. His moveset has woodpecker-like moves. And he's a woodpecker in the IDW comic series. I think I'd pick the Fighter's Mega Mix Guide as being the most definitive piece of evidence in this debate, clearly stating his species. But Sega are flaky about a lot of things in the world of Sonic, so who really knows if Bean's origin will be retconned in the future? If you enjoyed this video, consider checking out my growing playlist of Sonic character profiles in the playlist that pops up at the end. I've done Ashura the Hedgehog, Fleetway Supersonic, and there's plenty more to come. If you enjoyed, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing for more gaming and Sonic stuff in the future. And if you have a character you'd love to see covered, let me know in the comments. Thanks, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.